Welcome to another video review. Today I'm looking at the Silverstone Strider Plus 600 watt power supply. What's included with this power supply is the user's manual, four Velcro tie downs, four cable ties, four thumb screws, and four regular black screws for mounting the power supply in the case, as well as the power cord and the modular leads which are already attached. The Strider Plus series of power supplies are currently available in wattages ranging from 600 to 1000. I'll be reviewing the 600 watt model. Now how is this wattage determined? Well to understand that you need to know what rails are. Rails are basically well regulated transformers which convert domestic current into the voltages that your computer system can use and there are essentially two different rails the 3.3 slash 5 volt rail and the 12 volt rail. In this particular case the approximate maximum peak output of the 3.3 slash 5 volt rail is 140 watts and the 12 volt is 504 watts which is essentially how the wattage of this power supply is determined. The 3.3 slash 5 volt rail is responsible for the motherboard, memory, PCI cards and so on, while the 12 volt rail is responsible for the hard drives, optical drives, fans, CPU, video cards, etc. Also, some might be interested to know the peak amps on each rail. Well, the plus 3.3 volt rail and the plus 5 volt rail are both 24 amps each and there's a single plus 12 volt rail which is 42 amps. There are a number of important things to remember when selecting a power supply. The first is wattage. Determine how much wattage you are going to require by the amount of hardware you will be installing. Generally speaking, a medium to high-end gaming rig would require a 500 to 700 watt power supply. For a hardcore system, select the power supply that's around 800 watts. If, however, you are building an extreme gaming rig with a top-of-the-line multiple video card setup with lots of other hardware, select a power supply that's 1000 watts or greater. Second, it should be at or above 80% efficient at typical load. This power supply's efficiency is between 82 to 85% at 20 to 100% loading. Third, it should meet the latest ATX and other current standards, environmental directives, overvoltage, undervoltage, and other protections. This power supply meets all current standards. Fourth, I'd recommend choosing a power supply that has a PFC, a PFC or active power factor correction, assist the power supply in being more efficient and therefore stable under load. A PFC basically reduces total harmonics, corrects input voltage, and allows for full input voltage range. Thankfully, this power supply has a PFC. Fifth, there are three main certifications, 80 plus, NVIDIA SLI, and ATI Crossfire. Many of today's high-end power supplies meet one or more of these certifications. This power supply is certified to meet 80 plus bronze requirements. Sixth, look for a power supply that uses Japanese capacitors. This ensures a much more reliable product than a power supply with low-grade capacitors. This power supply uses Japanese capacitors. Now finally, get a power supply that has enough leads for your setup. Also consider a power supply that has a modular design because it reduces the cable mess inside the case. Now let's have a closer look at this power supply. It has a black paint finish and the housing is steel. They include a very quiet 135 millimeter fan with a recessed fan grill. Now this fan and the ventilation ensures that the inside of the power supply remains cool in almost any environment. Here's the power cable connection, but there's no power switch. Now this power supply has lots of long sleeved leads and they are all modular, including the main motherboard leads, but actually these leads come attached when the power supply is shipped. So you can then detach the ones that you don't need and just leave the ones connected that you do need. Now let me disconnect all of these modular leads to show you what a power supply looks like without any leads attached at all. There you have it. And at the back of the power supply, they do illustrate where all of these different modular leads get 
connected. Modular leads are fantastic because you only need to use the ones required for your particular setup, which reduces the cable mess and increases airflow inside the case. Finally, have a listen to the 135 millimeter fan. There are plenty of so-called modular power supplies on the market, but very few are completely modular like the Silverstone Strider Plus line of power supplies. That ranges from 600 watts all the way up to 1000 watts so you can get a power supply that fits your particular setup. Now this power supply comes with a 135 millimeter fan, lots of ventilation, long modular leads, but the power supply is only bronze certified. Now I say only because a lot of today's power supplies are 80 plus silver and 80 plus gold certified. But overall, this is still a great product. Until next time, take care.